Comrades, I am Admiral Andre, and this is Subnautica. Uh, this is a bit of an unusual series for this channel, I think, and I know what some of you are thinking. What? Not another new series that you're never going to get around to completing? Well, at some point, I'm sure I will complete all of the series that I'm doing. That is one of my core principles. I always finish a series when I start it. Just lately, this this game has been sort of nagging at me. And a few times I've played it re in recent days just for myself. And uh, yes, I do have to admit that I have a lot of experience with this game. So it's not going to hold any surprises for me. I have completed the campaign once as well. You know, the full storyline. But still, this is something I thought, you know, this could be a really interesting thing for the channel. Because... It's also one of the things I enjoy watching other YouTubers uh, play and to see how they do it. And uh, well, so let's just have a look here. I'm running the latest version of the game. So by the time you watch this in the future, it might be complete already. I'm very much looking forward to the final release of this game. But it's October 2017, even though it's now November, uh, 55670. And you'll see here under my save games, I've got a couple of them here. And the latest one I actually played today a little bit. And this one has been going for 23 hours and 26 minutes. So quite a long time there. But one thing you will also notice is, well, I don't think you can actually, yes, you can. You can see it there. These are all survival games. And I was thinking I want to do a hardcore one which, uh, of course, a lot of people don't do because you die and then it's over. Uh, usually, if you die, you don't really have a penalty. You might just lose your vehicle that you're in. But with this one, of course, it's survival still, but with only one life. So this is a, a roguelike thing. You, you can only save when you exit the game. Also, they say here you get no oxygen alerts. But I've done an experiment a few minutes ago, just I started one up and I didn't actually save it. They do have oxygen alerts, so I don't know if this is just too difficult or whatever the case might be, but we're going to have to be very careful of oxygen here. So I think one of my strategies is I always want us to carry an oxygen tank in the inventory. Of course, it's going to take a lot of space that could be used by other things. But still, it's a, a necessary thing, I think, just for safety here. So all the normal rules will apply, but uh, of course, we don't want to die horribly. So I'm going to start this up. And if you've seen the intro, of course, you can skip it. But if you haven't, then I certainly invite you to enjoy it. And we'll see where we end up. So uh, I guess here we go. Good luck to us. Okay, we're on the ground. That was definitely not the smoothest descent ever. And I always wince when that thing hits us in the face there. Okay, let's take care of this fire immediately. Uh, not a good situation to be in and not a good time to admire the extinguisher here. Okay, I'll let the PDA do its normal talking here. So uh, let's just boot it up. I love that Altera. Head trauma. This is considered an optimal outcome. This PDA has now rebooted in emergency mode with one directive to keep you alive on an alien world. Please refer to the data bank for detailed survival advice. Good luck. I actually never read this stuff. Start here, survival checklist. Blueprint has been corrupted. That's why we have to go looking for them. 
But uh, yes, so I certainly agree with this PDA voice here that this was an optimal outcome because we've seen, if you have any experience with this, we are the sole survivor. So minor head trauma is certainly the best possible outcome here of the whole crew. So we end up uh, a little bit further ahead now. I see uh, it's obviously random where you end up with the uh, safe shallows. But last time I ended up a bit more back there to the south towards the back of the Aurora, which is never a good place to be. But okay, here we are. So now we have to survive. I think firstly I just want to get a one of these kits here. This is going to be absolutely critical now. And I'm going to have to car carry spare ones with me at all times. So let's just have a look. Where did we end up? Uh, it's of course always the safe shallows, but it looks like this time we're on the edge of one of the grassy areas, which is very interesting because we can access the resources there immediately. Okay, normal things. I think let's just carry uh, some of this scrap back to the uh, pod. Just see, is there anything else nearby? We've got some floaters rolling around there. Any other sort of uh, rock formations? There's a few. Let's just see if we can get some copper. Uh-oh. Oh, you see, they do say oxygen, at least. But I'm so tempted, you know, because... That's going to be a big thing for me. I'm going to be too reckless here. I can see it already. Okay, copper is essential. Your probability... Ah. I agree. This time I actually agree with her because now that it's on hard mode, it is very unplausible or unlikely. But we'll see. We'll just have to hope for the best. Okay, I think we've got enough scrap metal now. Oh my good grief. This is the one thing about our location here. It's a bit deep, so I'm going to have to watch out. Sometimes we get lucky and we end up in really shallow water. Okay, let's just make some of this titanium. Hopefully we start, don't start drifting away again. In every single game I found that the uh, life part drifts away somewhere but it does take a long time before it actually does that okay I think we can make some oxygen tanks now just uh, two of them to have one in storage okay is there anything else we need right now uh, we can't make pretty much anything else some waterproof lockers maybe yeah let's make some of those just uh, we in have to end up doing that anyway at some point. Let's just make two and then we can store some things in there, even though it's not really necessary yet. The rest I'm just going to put in here and uh, I think that's it. Also, we just have to make sure this other tank has oxygen in it because I believe if you just have it made and it sits in the inventory, it's not actually going to fill with oxygen. So I just have to left click. Yep, there we go. Now it's full. Okay. This one is still busy and we need to get to the repairs. There's a lot of things to do now. At least get some nice animations there. And some food. I always feel a little bit bad if I hold them in my hand like that. Poor thing. We know what's going to happen to it. But hey, I don't really have a choice here. Especially the peepers, now that I know what role they actually play in keeping this whole ecosystem alive. But yes, I'm going to try to not spoil things too much. I'm already giving things away here. But I'm sure most people watching this will have some experience in the game. Boomerang, come here. Come hither. Copper. Let's just have a look for some quartz here. Also cave sulfur. Definitely gonna run into your friend and mine very soon. The crash fish. Oh no, 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 no. Okay, see in this case, left click and we get 3 seconds more oxygen. So that's, that's the thing. 
I know at some point I'm probably going to drown. That's going to be what kills me. That or dying horribly by some terrible monster. Let's just go back up because this is also the thing now. I've refilled the one bottle but I need to also refill the other one before going back down because otherwise I'm going to find myself in need and then the other bottle is empty and then I'm dead. Come here Gary. Thank you. No crash fish though. Hmm. Well, I guess it's a good thing. I don't want them too close to my capsule or uh, pod there, at least initially. Okay, gotta get some focus here. I think we first need to get some creepvine seeds because I need the knife and the fins as well. It's going to be a, quite a challenge to get all of the in, uh, recipes now again, especially the more far-flung ones. But that's the fun of it. Okay, come on, come on. No, come on. Just get a couple of them because we also need them for the silicon. Okay, you see? There again, saved by the second tank. I also want that inflation device that gets us to the surface quickly. And another peeper if I can get one. It's funny, the, the notice comes up first and then she does the speaking, but that's okay. Let's just get back and make some food and uh, just see what we need now. Obviously still the crash powder. Okay, whole fish. A uh, whole fish. Uh, not sure if I've eaten one of these lately. 21 and 3. It's not terrible. Of course the Reginalds are the best one. I think anyway. The fabricator cooks small organisms while disposing of the skeletal structure, bodily fluids and internal organs, thus rendering them safe for human consumption. It is common for those accustomed to synthetic foods to be repulsed by eating an animal carcass. Remember that humans survive this way for millennia. You must be way different in the future. People are not used to eating animal carcasses. So let's just make some silicon rubber and uh, what's the other thing we're gonna need? We don't need lubricant right now. Let's just see. I can make the fins now. And... I just wanna let... Let her do a, a speech there. I don't want to really talk over that. But yes, yeah, so we can't override the settings because the fabricator basically tailors itself for the environment that you find yourself in. So I'm sure if we crash landed on a desert world, it would have given us more appropriate things for that. But uh, it's very interesting how they made the story. Of course, humans will definitely, you know, this is fiction obviously, but if this was real life, I'm absolutely certain the same thing would have happened. There would have been some massacre, because we just make stuff for free, basically. We just throw the ingredients in. So, I mean, obviously people would be tempted to make guns and things, and then at the first sight of a brawl, it would have been a massacre. So, I'm definitely understanding that choice of not putting weapons in okay now what's the next thing let me just leave all this stuff here and uh, okay we'll carry the boomerang it's fine just oh no I know there's nothing too dangerous out there on the grassy plateaus but still this feeling of dark ocean is never something I like but the real terrifying thing is, of course, the dead zone, but uh, this is still not nice. Okay, let's just deploy these here. I love that effect with the 
air inflating there. So is there anything I need to put in here now? Nothing. It's just for getting the, the storage in place. And these guys are here as well. Uh, hey, there's one of the brain corals. 30 seconds. Just wait here for a moment. I also need to make a flashlight, but we do have some uh, flares in the storage there, so let me just get those. I rarely use these actually, so I better do it. So first we admire it, of course, and then we use it. So let's just see. I don't want to throw the thing now, but that's probably going to end up happening. Yep. Come on. There it goes. Ah, come on. It's kind of hard to see. There we go. Now, crash fish, where are you? I need your sulfur deposit. Not this way. Detecting increased local radiation levels. The trend is consistent with damage to the Aurora's drive core sustained during planet fall. I wonder why they changed that because before it used to say mm -hmm. damage to the Aurora's dark matter drive core and now they just removed the dark matter thing. I don't know. Maybe people were saying that's doesn't make sense or something, but I thought it was fine. Do we have the fins? Yes, we do. It's just because I'm holding something now that I'm swimming a bit closer, uh, slower. Come on, bladderfish. New creature discovered. It's typical of humans. May have unexpected applications. As soon as we get anywhere, we start depleting the natural resources, uh, poisoned. And uh, yes, yeah, so eventually there's going to be some fish population depletion happening. But I do think they respawn over time, but it doesn't happen immediately. I need the crash fish powder or the sulfur. Maybe down here. Let's have a look. Quartz is always a good thing. I don't need the eggs right now. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. Bad idea. Still gonna do it though. Maybe we'll find some silver. Yep. Good, I'm always looking for silver. Ugh. This guy must be very resilient because even though he's burning, he's not taking that much damage. 30 seconds. 30 seconds, so they do give full oxygen warnings even on survival or hardcore. And uh, yeah, let's just actually go up. try to avoid dying here and we can see it is on hardcore because if I go to the menu you see there's only a save and quit to desktop there's no normal save there okay let's go back down and get some more doing okay on water and food Just get this lead, always useful, and more silver, always useful, especially for the habitat builder, I think. I need the wiring kit. Quartz, always good, and should we go down there? Ah, gotta be so much more careful than I usually am. I'm telling you now, my recklessness is definitely getting me killed at some point. Okay, let's go up and uh, I think 
No, I should have, I do, yes, in the third slot there I do have a bladder fish, so I want to make that inflation device because that thing is super useful. I'm still looking for the crash fish thing. That's the one thing I also will give definite credit for the developers here. Even though, I mean, I have played this game before, so I'm quite familiar with everything here. It still, every time you start a new game, it still feels different because you're starting in a new location and it sort of feels very unfamiliar. So that's a very good thing. Never get tired of starting a new game. So I think let's just make the boomerang now. And where's that inflation thing? I need silicone. Should have some seed clusters here. There we go. Now, where is it again? There we go. Very important thing to have. Let's put it on slot number four. And anything else? Okay, the quartz and things. Do I need to use that now? See, do I have copper? I do, so I can actually make some tools now just need some acid mushrooms for the battery and we can at least make the scanner one two and maybe you should take another two just for the uh, flashlight as well even though we do technically now have a light source that we can always use I find that the flashlight is a bit better on the eyes it's not as overwhelming as the flares which is again a very realistic thing there okay battery and then we should be able to make the well power cell as well it's a good thing some glass and scanner number one the scanner can be used to synthesize blueprints from salvage technology and to record alien biological data so it's quite important that we get that as soon as possible. Then also the flashlight there. And can we get the builder? Uh, we're going to need some gold for that, I think, for the computer chip, which we do have. Yay. Okay. Let's just see. What else do I need for a computer chip? Table coral and copper wire. So I can pretty much do that straight away. Let's just organize things here a little bit I always put the scanner on number two and the knife on number one and that should do for now okay what are we looking for some table coral it's just trying out the knife there one two and we can scan it our very first item and we should also do a self-scan. We already know what the outcome is. Vital signs normal. Detecting trace amounts of foreign bacteria. Continuing to monitor. So we are definitely infected, but they did say that this environment has high levels of bacteria. And again here, I think if a situation like this ever happens, where a human being crashes on another planet, even if it's a compatible one, like a, an oxygen-rich environment, we're still going to die pretty soon because there's going to be pathogens and bacteria and things that we are not uh, resistant to. So that is something we're going to have to keep monitoring. Can I scan you while we're at it? Oh, of course I'm going to die in the process. No, 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 no. Bad, 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 bad. Oh, my health is going back up. That's interesting. I haven't seen that before. Very strange. I wonder why that is. I mean, my food and water is not even full there. Maybe the uh, gasopod thing is a temporary effect. Interesting. I should test it out, but... Uh, not in hardcore mode. 
What else are we looking for? We're still looking for the crash powder. I think let's just go and look for that now. And also if we see any salt along the way. Okay, is the other tank full? Yes, okay, good. Let's try here. Yes, okay. You're gonna do your thing and I'm gonna try and zoom away and you're gonna blow up but uh, luckily not damage me too much. There it is. I wonder why it has sulfur. It must be some biological process there where the sulfur is actually a residue. I don't think I've been in this cave before. Interesting with a brain coral. Ah, of course. Can we just not do that, please? That one hurt a bit more. Giant coral tubes. This is, of course, important for water, for bleach anyway. Let's just wait here for a moment. Scan the brain coral. I think what I'll also do after or at the end of each episode, all the things that we've scanned, I'll just have a look at them. Again, if you haven't played this game before or you don't know what everything is about, then that might be an interesting thing. Just scan the sulfur plant here. I don't think I've scanned these things before. Limestone outcrop. Now if that was me, I wouldn't use my scanner to crack open a rock deposit. That is certainly not going to end well for the scanner, but these things must be very strong. Okay, we have what we need now, so I think it's time to go back. Let's just see, is there anything else? Yep. Copper, always good. And should we get some more food? I know the oxygen thing, but uh, we can just do this now. But I really shouldn't do that for sort of normal procedure. That should only be for emergency, because now if we run out of oxygen and I try to use the tank, it's going to be a bad situation. So let's just uh, reload them now, refill them. There we go. Also, hopefully another medical kit fabricator is free. Oh, inventory full. That happened fast. Let's put the uh, tube coral sample away and some of the quartz as well. This has been a very good haul, I have to say. Our starting location is quite fantastic because I remember some of my previous games, it was quite a struggle to find things. Okay, filtered water and so on and so on. Let's just make some paper and uh, boomerang as well. At least they do give us a little bit of water. Old cooked. Ah, that's going to take the water away. But I'm still tempted. Okay, let's just eat that. This one puts it back again. And what's the other thing? Oh yes, we have to make the repair tool. There we go. Just the first step is always getting this capsule back online. So let's do that. And of course he's going to burn himself in the process. But if I made a shiny thing like that, I would also be looking at it. Get rid of the smoke here. Good. Much better. Just heal. Okay, now we can look at the assessment of the environment here. So secondary systems are online. The outgoing radio communication is still compromised because I haven't repaired that yet. But the incoming one is online, which is funny because it's obviously still broken. Uh, flotation devices are deployed. Whoever made those devices should be fired or dumped on a planet like this one because the other 
uh, pods don't fare very well. I mean, of all of them, again, I'm spoiling things here now. I think there's only one other one that actually inflates. Hull integrity is okay, and the environment is, of course, an uncharted ocean planet with an oxygen-nitrogen atmosphere, but the waterborne bacteria levels are high, so obviously that's now why we are infected. So let's see, I need to repair this radio. Okay, will do. Good. Admiral, not Captain. Okay, a message has arrived. Now this... Uh, I'm going to listen to that in just a moment. I think we should just get some water. Again, we have to be very much uh, aware of these things now with a hardcore mode. Otherwise, this is going to be a very short series. And uh, if we die, I'm definitely stopping the series. I might make another one then at some point, but... I mean, the point of a hardcore series is that when you die, you die. Let's just see, anything else here? Uh, some salt would be very nice now. Don't see any. It's usually uh, by the kelp forests, I think. Just get as many of these bladder fish as possible. Also scan the boomerang and the other bladder fish. Ideally we should do that first actually before we grab the thing. I don't think we need more metal now. Uh, obviously we will very soon, but for right now I think we're okay. Uh, that Aurora is not looking healthy, but of course we know what will happen soon. Okay, what's next? Uh, water. It's unfortunate now, like they say, this is not the vegetarian option, but again, I don't have much of a choice now. Uh, all of them? Sure, why not? It's not going to spoil if I make more water than I need right now, but this is only 20. So I have to use them anyway. Okay, I want to make a computer chip next. Let's just see if I... Ah, oh, come on. Okay, I can do that. And then... Advanced wiring kit is now also available, but I just want to get the habitat builder. I'm not going to use it now, yet, but... Uh, still need two ash acid mushrooms. Did I not put some in here? Nope. Just gotta go back down and of course it's getting dark now. Let's just grab these big ones. Okay, so battery. These must be some really powerful acid mushrooms because it's I mean, for them to make a battery that actually lasts quite a while is uh, very impressive. Uh, let's just see, what next? I need the wiring kit, that shouldn't be a problem. Nope, can do that. And the habitat builder. Luckily with these tools, usually we only have to build it once. That's very much advantageous. Okay, what next? Um, let's just see, I need to put some things away, but I can't really. I still have to take the water that we actually got in the capsule when we uh, landed here, or crashed here, I should say. Okay, we still have the nutrient blocks, but those are definitely for an emergency, and... Uh, Okay, I think that'll do for this first episode. We've just gotten ourselves basically established now. Just listen to this message here. This is Aurora. Distress signal received. Rescue operation will be dispatched to your location in 9, 9, 9, 9, 9 hours. Continue to monitor for emergency. 
Watch and receive transmissions from other life pods. Caution. Continued degradation of the Aurora's drive quote may result in a pointed detonation. Continuing to monitor. Okay, so that was not part of the radio message. So yes, they're saying we can expect rescue in 99999 hours, which I think I once tried to work that out. It's something like 11 years or something. In other words, uh, it's not going to happen. And uh, the reason why it's of course 99999 is because there couldn't be a higher value than that. I'm sure they only had five digits there. So, in other words, it can be much more than 11 years. And at this point, I don't know if they, th they know that uh, we're actually alive here. So, we're on our own, pretty much. But luckily, I'm a fleet admiral, so I do have some experience with this sort of thing. I was uh, on board the Aurora here to just monitor their efforts. And uh, actually, I was getting passage to explore this part of deep space. But uh, yes, yeah, so uh, our exploration efforts took a bit of a turn here. What is that flashing over there? There it is now, here. Now it's back there again. Very odd. I would imagine this one is just to show us where the pod is, but... That's very... Oh, it's because of the oxygen bubbles. Okay, mystery solved. So there's a new message, but I'm not going to listen to that right now. Let's just have a look at our uh, scanned items here. So, of course, our voice logs are all here just to tell us everything that we've heard so far. But uh, data bank. So let's just have a look. We have some life forms here. The flora, the acid mushroom. I love this as well. I, I've noticed people playing the game, you know, on YouTube. They don't always see this, but uh, there's a threat level assessment for everything that you scan. Now, of course, it's zero for the mushroom, but actually, I, I think it should be a little bit more than zero, because if you cut the thing with your knife, you're actually going to get burned. But uh, that's not really a threat anyway. So the sulfur plant, these plants appear to serve as nests for the explosive organisms. The outer petals appear undamaged by the presence of the inhabiting creature, suggesting a complex co-development, so they don't actually make the thing. The plant has evolved to feed on nutrients and minerals deposited within it by the fish. Sulfuric deposits on the inner leaves provide an insight into the mechanism by which the creatures explode. Assessment. Sulfur has applications in the construction of the repair tool. So, I have to say I love the attention that the developers put into all of these things. Because it's not really necessary, you know, for, for playing the game to have all of these sort of rationales for everything. But it is such a very immersive aspect to the game. So let's have a look. Acid Mushroom. A common spore-bearing fungi species with developed defense mechanisms. The flesh contains a highly acidic compound which leaches into the water if the outer skin is penetrated. It is not clear which predator species necessitated such extreme countermeasures, but the acid mushroom's numbers suggest it has successfully deterred most of them. Assessment. Inedible. Acid has applications in battery fabrication. So if you crash land here and you don't know anything, then it's just going to be by luck that you discover that because you can't scan the thing before you make a battery and you have to take it to make one. So yes. Writhing weed. Well adapted to both shallow waters and cave systems, this plant lives in symbiosis with a coral species which forms around the base of the stems. Unfortunately, we don't have a picture of that, but that's the blue, blue-green grass, basically. Uh, let's see. Herbivores, the bladderfish, of course. This unusual herbivore appears mostly defenseless. Semi-permeable membrane. This life form is able to filter seawater into its body cavity through a unique membrane, removing and consuming organic particulate caught on the way. Open-ended vascular tubing. Can be angled and contracted to pump out water and achieve low-velocity guided propulsion. Good grief, so it's almost like a rocket there. Largely oblivious to threats, it's only identified defense mechanism. It is 95% cartilage, so you don't really want to eat the thing. 
you're not going to get much value out of it which is why I guess they survive despite being oblivious to threats. Assessment. Membrane may have applications as a natural water filter, which we have found already, and of course to make an air bladder. Boomerang. Actually now only notice the teeth there. Hmm, interesting. A herbivore encountered in large numbers found to frequent shallow waters and move in schools. Serrated teeth. Clearly, I've never read this before. Suggests adaptation for grinding coral. So they actually feed off the coral. Very interesting. Twin fins. Unusually, this species' two fins are a cartilaginous. Let's try that again. Cartilaginous extension of its skeleton. Obviously, that's not a word I use in everyday speech, but anyway. Less prone to damage, harder to grow back. Hmm, I guess they do grow back. More active during daylight hours and prone to flee on approach, but edible. So I guess this makes a staple food for most players starting out. Gasopod, a slow moving life form, but you see it has a little bit of threat there. Uh, which fills the surrounding water with a poisonous and corrosive compound capable of dissolving even synthetic fibers. So that's interesting. Filtration system. Multiple gill layers appear to render this creature impervious to the noxious clouds it produces. Algae gland. A bulbous sac-like appendage on the rear end, clearly. A luminescent yellow algae grows inside the sac and produces a poisonous compound. Abdominal muscles can contract, causing the algae gland to emit the noxious compound into the surrounding water. Large pelvic fins. Capable of powerful movement through the water when moving in small herds. Gasopods appear to be social in nature, well, and may even use their emissions in their relationship rituals. Their audible calls are likely sign signifiers of nearby threats or food resources. Interesting. Let's have a look. There's some coral things there as well. Let's look at the planet. So this we get after we repair the pod here. 4546b. Uh, so, Category 3 ocean planet, oxygen, nitrogen, atmosphere with extensive biodiversity. May support Leviathan class predators, so that's sort of a warning there. Water contaminated with high levels of foreign bacteria, and the planet is beyond Federation space, and rescue is unlikely. It is not recommended to explore this environment without hazardous material suits and extensive support apparatus, which of course we don't have. Limestone outcrops, uh, they basically just give us titanium and copper, but you're welcome to read that if you wish. Brain coral, also a very interesting species here. This is actually a colony, I think, yes. And uh, air tanks can siphon the oxygen from them, or at least they assess, they uh, siphon it from the water and then we can get it from them. Coral shell plate has no real practical application. Uh, giant tubes do though, they have lots of calcium. Different solution, uh, what's successful. And uh, table coral, that's what we use for the computer chip. So it's another colony of microorganisms. Jewel-like nodes are concentrated buildups of rare minerals. Interesting. So that's why we can actually use it for a computer chip. Okay, well, I guess that does it. We haven't looked at any blueprints and so on, but that is definitely for another episode. So, uh, it's day again. So I'm going to save here and uh, do let me know if you enjoy this and if I should continue making it. And uh, let's hope we don't die. So hope to see you next time and thank you for watching.